in an affluent Boston area town with an excess of credentialed hyper-educated liberals. This is affluent, not effluent. Maybe both. <laughs> Could be both. Yeah. The level of masking is insane. A hundred percent of librarians. Oh man. I was in a affluent town on the West Coast with an excess of credentialed hyper-educated liberals two days ago. And I went into an, a bookstore that I'd been in 15 years ago, and it made me so sad. So sad. And it's, it's like the book people. So you, I'm going to read this question, but you say the librarians. All of the employees, no, not all of the employees. Many of the employees were masked as well in this bookstore. And I actually, I, I, had, I took two pictures. Actually, the, the books that were prominently displayed, I, I asked Zach if he wanted them for Christmas. So I'm going to just look this up. Sorry, guys. Um, were, I didn't even tell you this, but um, I've got... A Message from Ukraine by Volodymyr Zelensky. <laughs> I open it. Boy, it's a doozy. Um, and then I have um, White Women, Everything You Already Know About Your Own Racism and How to Do Better by Regina Jackson and Syra Rowe. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Zach's like, I can't choose. Can I have both? <laughs> But so I find I'd like I went up to the desk. I'm like, I'd like to know if you have a hunter gatherer's guide to the 21st century. Um, and he's like, century hunter gatherer. What? Like, okay. it turns out they did though. Oh. And he's like, oh, I, yeah, I think I actually may. I think it's in the science section or maybe the psychology section. I'm like, oh, that would be cool. It's not in the science section, unfortunately. Uh, it's in the psychology section where it doesn't go. But it was actually it's face out on the shelf. Nice. So yeah, this anyway. Um, yes. Book culture, like the book people, have become the most compliant. And oh, like, this is not what books are for. They're sucky. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm rant over. I'm going to read the question I from the beginning I'm now. I think I'm going to start wearing a Lone Ranger mask. You know, I believe in masking, but just not the way they do. <laughs> yes. Um, one of the last local business holdouts here still requiring masks is an anarchist bookstore. Mm. That's, there it is. That's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Melinda. That's like I That's like I think we're done. That's the term nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary Ellen writes: I live in an affluent Boston area town with an excess of credentialed, hyper-educated liberals. The level of masking is insane. Hundred percent of librarians, forty to fifty percent of rando grocery shoppers, fifteen plus percent of people walking outside. Some seem broken beyond hope, like the masked woman in Trader Joe's, who literally ran away when I commented in passing that the flowers in her cart were beautiful. I was unmasked. What do you think is wrong with them? That's the question. Uh, yeah, well, they are they are broken. They've been broken by an environment in you know. Now let's st start here. There are two kinds of people in the world. Now there are about fifty thousand different useful things you can say after you've decided to dichotomize the world into two, two types of people. <laughs> but there are two types of people in the world. There are an infinite number of two types of people yes, in the world. In, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, but there are those whose reality is a mixture of physical phenomena and their implications and social phenomena and their implications. And then there are people whose reality is entirely social. And they look normal because socially speaking all of the physical ramifications get encoded into some social thing mm -hmm. and so people who are completely social in their orientation function in a world where physics happens mm -hmm. but when the social world goes completely batshit crazy the people who are a balance between a physical world and social world reality have some chance of grounding themselves people who are mostly or entirely social have nothing yep. to, with which yep. to anchor. And so yes. they end up being dragged into this collective insanity. And in this case, the collective insanity was corporate and governmental in nature. It came through every channel all at once. It came with a threat. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that lots of people who had no alternative toolkit were just like signing up for crazy, you know, nobody yeah. ever gave the all clear, so they're still crazy, yeah. you know. Yep, yep. No, that's right. Um, to your, there are two types of people in the world point. Yeah. Uh, Glendon writes one that I'm very, I'm, I'm very fond of. Uh, there are two types of people in the world. One, those you can extrapolate from limited data. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, 
let's see, it's 1.12. Uh, there's a couple of just quick comments, and then let's try to get through maybe two more questions. And apologies that we're still missing a solid third of them. Um, I've lost my place. Here we go. Thoughts on use of lab leak hypothesis versus lab escape hypothesis. The prior may be interpreted as accidental, accidental or intentional, the latter more encompassing. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah, it's an important distinction, and I'll just say uh, my feeling is we are obligated to stick with the more generous, less... No, he's saying that lab leak could be accidental or intentional, but lab escape actually in oh, increases. We should use it because... Because, because, yep, because it's a bigger I, solution And I set. agree. The problem is it's less familiar. and so Right. So I, I, so I think where you were going was we should use the bigger one, but the bigger one is less familiar. So I think you're going you're gonna to argue for lab leak because it's what well, we arrived at. No, I also think that there's a game afoot that we have to survive. Mm -hmm. And the game is you will be induced into embracing something ahead of the evidence, and then you will be crucified for it. Mm -hmm. And so the point is... The evidence for lab leak is all but incontrovertible. The evidence for something beyond is non-existent as far as I know, mm -hmm. right? I leave open the possibility. I'm waiting to see evidence of it. Until then, I will mm -hmm. say it's lab leak. could be worse, but yep. Yep. it's lab leak. That's the thing we have evidence for, okay. and that's an important distinction. Okay. Um, I will point out a quote from Men in Black. A person is smart, people are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, someone on here asked how we keep uh, the cats from scratching the sofa, and someone else pointed out that this leather is really, really thick, because we say it when we read the ad for all form, and it's true. We're not just yeah. making that up. But it's absolutely true. But they don't try, in part, because um, two things. Um, we have really good cats now. All, all cats will try to scratch things. Um, they um, they have scratching posts and they actually like their scratching posts. Like they actually do do their stretches and we encourage them. But we also we haven't had to do it for a while. Um, have spray bottles of water and we shoot them. And yep. uh, when when they go after things they're not supposed to go after and they learn fast because they're not dumb. Unlike um, no like Anthony Fauci, they're not dumb bunnies. Um, but they're also much nicer than Anthony Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know what they're on about. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Zach, uh, we're going to go on for a couple more minutes. Um, uh, okay. Um, you still going to try to catch the 150 or something? Yeah. Very? Okay, 155. Okay. Instead of shadow CDC, might I suggest the intellectual dark CDC? Hmm. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, quickly, two more. Now that AB2098 in California passed, designating the dissemination of misinformation or disinformation related to the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus or COVID-19 as unprofessional conduct for physicians warranting loss of license. Holy fuck, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I did. How, what's that? I did. I at least knew that the bill said that. I didn't know that it had passed. Yeah, it's passed, uh, apparently. How long until other blue team states will follow suit now that elections are over? New York has a full docket of COVID regulations ready for the new session. We are very, very concerned with the mandating of the jab for school next year. I have a huge fear that the state will go after homeschooling directly, making the barrier to entry so ridiculous that parents will have to fold and get their kids the jab. Do you think this is just out of the realm of possibility? No, I'm afraid not, Andrea. I do not think that is outside of the realm of possibility. Yeah, almost nothing is. In fact, yeah. um, there was a really terrifying video out of New Zealand that I saw yesterday, at least, in which some member of the... New Zealand federal government is inviting people, if they think any of their friends have been radicalized, have any sort of extreme views, believe in con, you know, conspiracy theories, that they should be reported. The federal government in New Zealand? Yes. Man, she is a horror. Well, the, this She's was, a nightmare, that woman. Yeah. The, this was, this this was is, pretty shocking. Wow. The oh, prime minister, whatever her name is. I, just it wasn't the, the prime minister saying okay. it, but presumably she's chill with it. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty scary. God. Hey guys, that was a clip from our monthly private Q&A that you can get access to at my Heather Hyang's Patreon. And you can also get access there to all of the past paid subscriber content. So please consider joining us there. Did you mention that these private Q&As are the key to living a better life and living to tell the tale? I forgot to do that. These private Q&As are in fact the key to living a better life and what? Living to tell the tale. Living to tell the tale. Go ahead, live to tell the tale. Join us there. See ya.